Okay, so mission planning wise, I believe we had set this up so that we're looking at uh, no more changes in in another half a day, 12 and a half hours. We're going to be doing a re-entry. I'm actually thinking that up at that relatively high altitude, I bet you will be stable enough. We'll see. I bet you we can still continue to use this engine to a large part of the re-entry burn. We'll get down into the atmosphere, do a bunch of aero braking, and also burn this and uh, judge by by how what our arc and our total our you know our total orbital path looks like, our ballistic arc on our way around. may or may not be necessary in order to jettison this uh, jettison the dart 5 at that point and and use these engines to burn some more so what's the next thing yeah another two and a half hours Get a sphere of influence change um where did we lose our marker too. Uh, that can concerned me when that happened. All right, we'll just everybody be cool. Now this thing think, thinks we changed sphere of influence, but this other part does not. Oh, here it is. Moon escape. Moon escape. T plus six hours. Um, what? And after the switch, okay, everything's all fixed. Good. Yeah, that was just some weird, buggish stuff was happening. Let's add a maneuver node, and let's just take a look at how much retrograde it would it'll it'll need. I know that a whole lot of this retrograde maneuver is not going to be burning the engines. It's going to be uh, from arrow breaking, but I'm just kind of curious. How much total are we talking about? Okay, yeah, there's a nice gradual descent. Takes over 2,300 meters per second delta V, and our vehicle total 1277. So it takes, you know, not quite twice everything that I got. That looks so cool. You can see. Yeah, we have the, the cloud layers also just barely moving across the planet, so that makes me happy. If I'd thought ahead, if I still had one of my action group editing mods installed, I'd set up an action group for decoupling here and save us the um, potentially potentially hazardous technique that maybe we might be going out of control and uh, trying to right click on this little thing. I don't know, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. I'm sure it'll be fine. <laughs> and this is actually our first operational test of the, the small, the canary capsule in re-entering. We've launched a couple of these, but we've never yet attempted to re-enter one. So, you know, I hope it works. I'm sure it will. I can't imagine any reason why it wouldn't. <laughs> it is at this point, looking at that altitude scrolling by frighteningly fast, that I don't know about Ken, but I would begin to have some second thoughts about this whole plan. <laughs> oh, it'll work. I'm sure it'll work. Come on. Let's pull up that surface window. What is our vertical speed at the moment? Surface speed, 7.5 <laughs> kilometers per second. Or no, vertical speed is what it's like. In the, yeah. Negative 2.7 kilometers per second. Isn't that excellent? Yeah, let's get rid of that one. Actually, Delta V stats, I don't really want that one at the moment either. I do. I think I do want FAR just so we can look at the Mach number and laugh. Okay, Ken, any last words? Any... You know, thoughts, anything you want to say, this, this is the time, as if this goes even a little bit wrong, then you, you won't get another shot. You know, he's like, no, it's a fun ride. Yay. I saw the moon, man. Yeah, he's happy. <laughs> I like Ken. I think he's a good Kerbal. 
He wasn't so happy being in the station, but he really loves this whole flying business. So, he's a pretty good Kerbal. Interesting, why is our periapsis dropping a little bit? It says RCS must be doing a cup. Yeah, just tiny little squirts. Keeping our position. Alright, we're below the space station's altitude now. And still dropping. There goes the moon setting. That seems very fitting at this point. <laughs> and still, I'm gonna, I'm gonna wait to, to to burn until we get down to you know just immediately before we hit the periapsis. And is at this point that we are technically re-entering at Mach 26. <laughs> and already you can see some arrow breaking happening. You can see what's happening to our apoapsis over here. You can see it on the map. Shrinking. Yeah, it's all happening kind of slow. So we get down to 80 kilometers altitude. That's when I'll, I'll burn. Which is going to happen real fast. Right now. Oh, uh, yeah, and you can see that pogo bungee thing happening again. Isn't that fun? It actually looked like it was not the part that I was earlier thought it was. Okay, this thing's going to be out of fuel real soon. Uh, coming up on 4 Gs. Alright, that is out of fuel. Here, let's decouple this. Or undock, whatever. And stage. Okay, I don't want to use all this fuel just in case. Okay, now we're at the periapsis and starting on our way back up again. You can see that apoapsis is dropping real fast. That's good. Okay, there's roughly half of our fuel gone. Let's pull that delta V number up, delta V stats again, just to keep an eye on this. Uh, this gets drops down to like a hundred. I want to shut this off. Hundred, I said. Okay. Wow. Okay. I actually wasn't expecting it to work just exactly like that. And let me see. We're still. No. Okay. We're up out of the atmosphere again. All right. Looks like we're. I'm gonna do another another flyby. I think that we actually do not need to do any more uh, any adjustment out here. I'm I'm debating whether I want to do this to kind of steepen up our, our re-entry at all for our next time around. I think no. I think we'll continue to do just you know just yeah we'll wait and if you know, We'll burn the rest of our fuel on the next time we come around to the periapsis. Well, okay, one lesson learned. Uh, next time we do a similar type trip, um, I can go ahead and set the periapsis for lower without worrying about things breaking. Uh, probably, you know, I don't know how low. You know, okay, so this time we set it for 75 and we ended up skipping right on it out again. Uh, next time, we'll, yeah, we could try setting it even as low as 60. And see what that does for us. Be significantly more arrow breaking lower. Perhaps this one hour, hour and a half. All these rocks again. Oh, yeah, in the meantime, I, I think I forgot to mention this. We have another one that's set up for a collision, but this one's a piddly little A class, whatever. So, uh, you know, if I didn't care about the D class. Hitting curb, and I really don't care about that one. Close all that. Close it, I say. About to come down and hit the atmosphere again. Yep, there we are in the atmosphere again. Significantly slower than previous time. Now it's already, and it's already just enough to we have slight. Um, slight air effects here. Let's do, I want to do this, my EAS settings. 
because I like being able to keep an eye on that. And this time a periapsis is at 67 kilometers in dropping, so yeah, as we get down close to that. But I've got only 11 seconds worth of burn remaining in this thing. Okay, that's cool. You see that periapsis is already dropping. Apoapsis already dropping. Let's actually, let's turn RCS on right now and do some thrusting. Yeah, that does some good things. There's our monopropellant. There it is, right in that gauge. Okay, that's good. Okay, we'll keep thrusting on that way. Is this going to be enough to drop that down? Wow. Let's actually burn. Let's burn all of it at this point. Burn everything we got. Oops. Hold steady. Oh, wow. We still... Okay, is this going to be enough? Okay, at this point... Uh, nope. Yeah, let's get rid of that. Don't need that anymore. We don't hit it. <laughs> oh, look how fast this is dropping. I bet you that was enough for to give us a definite re-entry time to periapsis. That number is still decreasing, but it's decreasing slowly. How hot, how hot are we? Yeah, just not even 100 degrees yet. And see, it's this number. That's our blade of heat shield. Okay. And now you see the time to periapsis is increasing. Okay. Okay. Yeah. That's good. That's what we were looking for. Electric charge. Uh, we're using up that electric charge at kind of a concerning rate. I should keep an eye on that. Only one thing they have left to do is deploy the parachute. Yeah, ideally, I do not want to to pop the parachute while we are supersonic. I just it just seems bad to me to do that. Well, surface info. Why not? Here we go. Tabitha Ken. Yeah, he's still happy. Just getting a little bit warm. He's happy to see the pretty colors. Uh, what's up? Oh, it's all grief. I got kind of concerned for a second, but no, no, that was our, our whole service module. Well, that's it. <laughs> Still haven't used any ablative heat shield. I'm not hot enough yet. Temperature. Three, four, three, coming up to 350. Hot enough to cook your dinner, but not enough to hurt the, the vehicle yet. Ken. It's not as happy now. He's still there. He's adjusting his helmet. So it's starting to get kind of warm. 550 degrees. Got a G and a half. Oh, are we going to uh, go over this ocean and actually come down on this land over here? Land mass? No, I think we're still going to splash. But we might be kind of close to the beach. Uh, what was that? Pardon me. What was that? Oh, that's my Jeb 9000 control interface. <laughs> that was kind of startling. It's okay. We didn't need that thing. It wasn't going to tell us anything useful at this point anyway. Yeah, I'm kind of concerned about how hot we're getting. Approaching 1,000 degrees in a hurry. Our pad coming up on four G's of deceleration. I wonder what the temperature limit is on this pod. I really, really, I'm scared of this temperature. Is it slowing? It's okay. It's slowing down. It's going to peak. That's good. That's what this ablative heat shield is supposed to do, is to prevent it. And our temperature is dropping. Good. 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 We're saved. Of course, now. We're Above 6 G's, but Tabular Ken, he's tough. He can take it. Kind of care, kind of scary, though, anyway. 
And temperature dropping fast. Good. And our G-force has peaked at like six and a half, and those are also dropping. That's also good. At this point, I'm ready to say that the pod works, you know? Mach 3. Oh, you can see your procedural cloud layers. Ain't that pretty? Okay, everything cools off. We used just exactly half of the ablative heat shield. That's cool. You know, so it's not like we were cutting that close. And real soon, gonna go subsonic. Oh, look, he's he's unhappy about this. Oh, he's he's sad that his trip is coming to an end. Tabular Ken, I'm sorry, bro. You can enjoy the pretty clouds while you're in there. Eee, maybe Ken is afraid of clouds. I don't know, something like that. Ignore the big circle. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and pop the chute. Allow that to slow him down some more. I'm definitely going to go swimming. He's looking, his eyes are looking down. He's, uh, I don't know about this. Hope parachute works. Parachute's been kind of a trip too, you know? And he's looking up. He's wondering, is the parachute going to fully deploy? Uh, just any second now. Any second now it will. Any second now. Oh, there we go. Yeah, mild G-force spike there, but not like any, like what we had earlier. And, okay. He's not as upset now. Dart 5 maneuver node. What? Oh, I see. I see. Okay. Close that alarm. Yeah, we'll, we'll deal with that in a second. Okay. Successful mission. Even though screwed up the... Our moon... We did a moon loop. It wasn't the moon loop that was planned. But it was the moon, and it was looped. So I, I call that a success. Here's our shadow over there. Isn't that nice? And again, Kerbin has this invisible water surface, which is always kind of upsetting. Yep, that worked. Yeah, too bad it looks like kind of like it's levitating there. All right, cool, cool. All right, um, Tabular Ken, good job. Yeah, I see he's actually moving arms. He looks like he's just kind of securing stuff in the cockpit there after after the at the end of the trip. <laughs> I was pleased uh, that overall it went well. We, some important lessons were learned, and he came back. He's he's not hurt. He will live to fly another day. So overall, a good day in Kerbal Space Program. Let's recover this vessel. I'll cease recording, and I'll talk to all you fine people later. Bye.